wiki how not 16 chrome forward slash forward slash new tab forward slash https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash become dash valedictorian https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash make dash a dash guy dash feel dash special https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash be dash a dash conservative dash girl https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash look dash beautiful dash in dash middle dash school dash left parenthesis girls https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash act dash around dash girls https colon double forward slash www.wikihow.com forward slash understand dash teen dash boys how to become valedictorian download article parts one getting ready two working hard Three staying centered. Other sections. Expert Q and A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Jennifer Keifsch. Last updated, the 26th of June, 2024. Fact checked. Weird Al Yankovic, Alicia Keys, and Jodie Foster. What do all of these celebrities have in common? They were all valedictorians of their class. Though being valedictorian won't make you a supermodel or singer, it can set you on an impressive path that can lead you to succeed in your college career and in the world at large. All you need is to have mental toughness, endurance, and an unbeatable work ethic. So how do you do it? Just follow these steps. Part 1. Getting ready. Download article. 1. Start young. Unfortunately, in most cases, you can't just waltz into your high school on the first day of freshman year and decide to be valedictorian. You'll need to have proved yourself in middle school by taking the most rigorous math and English courses that your middle school had to offer. Some middle schools don't have tracking for their classes, but some do offer honors courses as early as 7th or 8th grade. Being in these courses will set you on a path to honors courses in high school, so make sure you've laid the groundwork for this. You can move up in English more easily, but once you're locked into a math track, it'll be harder to move ahead. For example, if you're in regular algebra in 8th grade, you'll have to go to regular geometry in 9th unless you've really proven yourself. If you can take two math classes, as this can help you get ahead. 2. Learn how your school chooses its valedictorian. Some schools rank students with an unweighted GPA, while others award extra points for harder classes. 1. Most schools do offer extra points for taking harder courses so you should aim to take these. And even if your school doesn't offer extra points for harder courses, you should still aim for success. After all, if you want to be valedictorian, then you probably want to go to a top-notch school, which means you'll have to take the most challenging classes anyway. For example, if your school does use a weighted GPA to determine valedictorian, then you may receive a 4.04-er in regular classes, a 5.04-er in honors classes and a 6.04-er in AP classes. 2. A valedictorian also typically gives a graduation speech in front of their classmates. 
but if this is the part that appeals to you the most, then make sure that the speech giver is the valedictorian. Some schools have the student body president give a speech, some have students vote for which student should give the speech, while others have the valedictorian and the student body president and another student give a speech. Some schools have more than one valedictorian or as many as 29. 3. Choose your classes wisely. If your school does factor the weighted GPA into their decision to choose the valedictorian, then you should take the most rigorous courses whenever possible. If you think that the harder classes may be too tough for you, then you may need to rethink being valedictorian. To be the valedictorian, you have to get as in the hardest classes at your school pretty much every time. Are you up for the challenge? Take AP classes over honors classes when you can, if they are worth more points. Your electives can really hurt your weighted GPA because they tend to be considered regular classes. However, all students in your school will most likely be expected to take some electives, such as gym or art class. Whenever you can, though, try to take an elective that is worth more points, if you have the option. For example, don't take creative writing if it is considered a regular class, take AP language and composition if it is offered to everyone instead. Sure, you may end up missing out on some fun classes over the course of your high school career. But those classes will not get you to be the valedictorian. If your school has the option of not having to take gym if you do a sport, then consider picking up a sport if not taking gym will boost your GPA. If you want to be valedictorian, then you should also be well-rounded so you stand out in college applications for more than just your grades. You should obviously not take a sport, though, just to make your GPA higher. Because the extra time you devote to sports may keep you away from your studies. 4. Remember that being the valedictorian will not guarantee you a spot to any elite college. If you want to be valedictorian, then you must be very ambitious, having your sights on elite schools such as Harvard, Yale, Duke, or Amherst. But remember that when you apply to colleges such as these, valedictorians will be a dime a dozen. Being Valedictorian will keep you in the running and will impress admissions officers, but you want to avoid looking like a cold grade obsessed automaton and show that you have depth, several other interests, and that you're a good citizen of your community. 3. Even William Moffat Simmons, the Dean of Admissions at Harvard, recently said, I think, it's a bit of an anachronism. This has been a long tradition, but in the world of college admissions, it makes no real difference. Being valedictorian in addition to showing strengths in sports, community service, or the arts will help you be an amazing candidate. But being ranked hash 10 in your class and doing these same things won't make you look much worse. Your SAT score will also have a major impact on your college. Acceptances Many colleges place equal weight on your GPA and your SAT score that means your effort for four years of high school courses will amount to about as much as your efforts on a 3.5 hour exam. Sound Fair It isn't, but you've got to get used to it. Part 2. Working hard. Download article. 1. Study smart. If you want to be a valedictorian, then you have to study smart to get good grades. 
This doesn't mean that you should spend all of your waking hours perched over your book, but it does mean that you should study as efficiently and thoroughly as possible. Here are some tips to get you studying hard, for make an efficient study schedule. Maybe you will spend two to three hours of studying a night, or maybe you will study for three to four hours every other night. Whatever you do, make a plan in advance so you don't end up getting overwhelmed or procrastinate. Pace yourself. Set a goal 10 to 15 pages per day, and don't go overboard. Too much or you'll burn out. Take advantage of practice quizzes. Your history books, math textbooks, or other course material may come with practice questions that you can Use to see how well you know the course materials. Even if your teacher doesn't use these resources, they can be valuable to you. Make flashcards. If flashcards help you memorize historical concepts, foreign languages, or even mathematical operations, use them. 2. Stand out in the classroom. You don't have to be the teacher's pet to be stellar in the classroom. You should, however, arrive to class on time, participate in class discussion, and ask questions when you're confused about something. Being focused in the classroom will help you absorb the course information more, which will lead you to do better on tests and it will also make your teacher like you more and will help you earn any in-class points allotted for the course, such as participation points. Keep your chatter with other students to a minimum. You may be missing some important information. Take stellar notes to study from. Don't just write down what the teacher is saying word for word. Try to put the notes in your own words so you Really absorb the material. Talk to your teacher after class occasionally. You don't have to annoy your teacher by always being there, but getting to know your teachers a bit more will help you stand out in their eyes. 3. Get organized. If you want to succeed in the classroom and throughout your studies, then you have to be organized. You need to have a notebook for every class, clearly. Labeled binders, a clean locker, and an organized desk at home. If your life is filled with clutter, then you won't be able to retain information as easily and you won't have as much to focus on your coursework as you'd want. 5. Keep a planner where you write down all of the homework due each day. Keep a calendar over your desk where you can mark important test dates. 4. Read ahead. Reading ahead to the material that your teacher will cover the next day or next week will give you a leg up on the course content and will keep you from getting confused or not absorbing as much information as you could. As long as you're not Covering anything too difficult that would be easier to comprehend if it were first explained by your teacher, you will be giving yourself a leg up by doing this. 6. Reading ahead is a great way to give yourself an edge. Just don't bring it up when you participate in class or the teacher may get annoyed that you're stealing her thunder or confusing other students with additional information. 5. Get extra help. You may be thinking, if I'm trying to be the valedictorian, then why would I need extra help? This is where you're precisely wrong. If you want to be the valedictorian, then you have to get an edge over the competition. Get more information or more repetition of the subject matter, whether you ask your teacher for extra help. After class, ask your parents for more help if they understand your homework better than you do, or even ask an older successful student for some assistance. 
you can also invest in a private tutor, but those can get pretty pricey. Part 3. Staying Centered Download Article 1. Participate in extracurricular activities. Always leave time for clubs, sports, volunteering, or other activities outside of class. Believe it or not, extracurricular commitments can boost your grades because they can help you organize your time better. Studies even show that student athletes tend to do better in school than non-athletes. 7. This will also help you stay grounded and will keep you from obsessing over your studies too much. 2. Maintain your social life. You don't want to be holed up in your room, studying for 10 hours under the glare of a too bright light bulb. You want to have time to study, sure, but you also want to make time to pursue your friendships, go to parties, hang out at the movies, or even go to the school carnival. If you spend 100% of your time with your nose buried in a book, you may start to feel a little bit unhinged and lonely. You don't have to be the life of the party, but having at least a few meaningful friendships will make you feel more motivated to study. Be sure that you stay away from most of the drama at your school, for it can be very time-consuming. 8. Find some friends that you can study with. Having a group of like Minded students can help you make studying more fun and productive. Try starting a study group for one of your classes and see how it works. Out, if you're able to stay focused, then you've just improved your chances of acing your classes. Tell us what you think. Which of the following strategies do you find most effective for maintaining a balanced lifestyle? Prioritizing self-care and relaxation. Setting realistic goals and expectations. Time management techniques. Seeking support from friends and family. 391 total votes. 3. Be aware of your competition, but don't obsess about rivals. You don't want to waste time on narcissism and nervous backstabbing. Don't go around asking your rivals what they got on their tests, how much time they spent studying for the latest exam, or what grade they think they're going to get in a class. This will make you focus your efforts in the wrong places and will keep you focused on what you have to do. Remember that everyone is different. Maybe you need to study for four hours to ace an exam and the student next to you only needs to study for three hours to do well. You don't have to be the most naturally gifted to be the valedictorian you just have to work the hardest. 4. Treat your body with care. Becoming valedictorian isn't a test of raw intellect, it's a test of endurance. Be healthy. Eat breakfast, and stay away from drugs and alcohol. Only when your body is strong can you perform at the highest level. Though you can splurge on pizza and candy once in a while, eating power foods like nuts, vegetables, and proteins will keep you focused on your work and will keep you from crashing or losing steam. 9. You can still have a social life while avoiding drugs or alcohol. If you want to be valedictorian, then you have to stick with the right crowd. 5. Get plenty of rest. Getting 7 to 8 hours of sleep a night and going to bed around the same time and waking up around the same time will keep your body feeling energetic and strong and will give you the fuel you need to pay attention in class, succeed in your exams, and to be a stellar student. 
make sure you give yourself plenty of time to study so you don't end up going to bed at 3 in the morning and sleeping through your classes. 10. Try to go to bed no later than 10 or 11 p.m. and give yourself at least 45 minutes to an hour before you leave the house in the morning so you feel alert when you head to class. 6. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you want to be the valedictorian, then you have to relax a little bit. Don't tell yourself that every little grade matters and will influence your fate and your chances of going to a good college. Sure, grades are important, but so is being mentally sound and having great friendships. Remind yourself that it's not the end of the world if you don't get a perfect test grade you'll get M next time. 11. To be the valedictorian, you'll have to be in a calm state of mind. Or you may find that the pressure is suddenly too much to deal with. Stay positive and always look forward doesn't waste your time. Stressing about your test grade from a month or a year ago. It just isn't worth it. Expert Q&A Question how can I manage all of my homework? Jennifer Keifsch Founder, Great Expectations College Prep Expert Answer Start using a calendar. Take some time every weekend to assess the work due in the upcoming week and come up with a realistic estimate of how long each assignment will take. Set aside time by class, by assignment by day to ensure that you are allotting enough time to do each well before the due dates. When you have an exam looming on the horizon, don't wait until the night before to study, make time to organize your notes, research confusing topics, and forward slash or make flash cards. Not helpful too helpful 12. Question. How should I take and study notes? Jennifer Keifsch Founder, Great Expectations College Prep Expert Answer This depends entirely on the subject of the class as well as whether you have access to a laptop forward slash tablet or will be writing notes by hand. Try to highlight keywords and concepts and, whenever possible, Organize your notes in a clear, structured way. Even better, record the lecture on your phone and type up notes. After class when you have time to hit pause and search confusing terms forward slash concepts as you go. Not helpful too helpful 12. Question. When can you become a valedictorian? Community answer. The valedictorian is the person with the highest GPA by graduation. It happens at high school graduation and at many colleges. Not helpful 29 helpful 237. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. If you want to become a valedictorian, make sure you're not distracted and never give others the chance to excel over you when they shouldn't. Stay focused. If you really want to be valedictorian, then you have to fight for it. Becoming valedictorian is only half the battle. It only gets you half of the way. You also have to write a valedictorian speech. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Don't beat yourself up over a failure. Everyone makes mistakes. Think of it as a learning opportunity. Just take a deep breath, identify what you did wrong, and move on with that knowledge. While extracurricular activities are beneficial, joining too many can stress you out and make it harder to accomplish becoming valedictorian. Don't obsess about being the best to the point you are viewing your friends as 
The competition. How to make a guy feel special. Download article. Methods. 1. Pampering him. 2. Showing him you care. Other sections. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Elvina Louis, MFT. Last updated, the 6th of May, 2024. Fact checked. The idea that it is a guy's job to make a woman feel special, and not the other way around, is very out of date. Today, it's normal for both partners to share the affection in a relationship. While every guy is different, there are a few basic things you can do to remind almost any special man how important he is to you. Surprise your partner with these ideas to show you care. Method 1. Pampering him. Download article. 1. Compliment the special guy. Men like feeling like they've affected their partner in a positive way. If your guy goes out of his way to do something for you, don't let it go. Unnoticed. Compliment your special man. Let him know you notice his efforts and that he means the world to you. 1. Try to be genuine with your compliments. It's usually easy to tell when a compliment isn't sincere, so don't risk having this happen between you and your man. Giving him just a few genuine compliments is better than giving lots of forgettable ones. 2. Another way to compliment your man is simply to give him your attention. Focusing on him, especially when you're talking with each other, shows that he is important to you. 2. Treat him to something you know he likes. No one knows your special man better than you, so pick a fun activity that you're sure he loves. He will definitely appreciate your gesture. If you're feeling especially generous, you can even treat him to an entire night that's all about him. For example, you might try cooking him dinner, his favorite meal would be a good choice. You can put on his favorite songs while you eat together. Then watch his favorite film together after that. Little details like this can really make him feel special. Turning a small gift into a surprise can make it even more amazing. For example, try slipping tickets to his favorite sports team into his hands. When both of you are having dinner. The gifts can be inexpensive, but with the effort that goes into planning a great surprise, they'll make him feel like a million bucks. 3. If you treat your man to a night out, don't be afraid to pay, it's not a guy's duty to pay for his lady every single time. This being said, you don't need to spend a lot of money to make him feel special. 3. Be generous with your affection. Tell your special guy that you love him. Treat him to lots of hugs, kisses, and snuggling, whatever you know he likes. Remind him that he's the perfect one for you and that you couldn't ask for anyone better. If he knows you're being sincere, this will make him feel special. If you're trying to make your man feel special, try not to be overly critical. If he makes a minor mistake, let it go. Bringing it up during a romantic day together can kill the mood. On the other hand, if he does or says something that's cruel or seriously disrespectful, you don't need to stay silent just because you were trying to make him feel good. 4. Look your best. A good relationship is about much more than physical appearances, but it doesn't hurt to look amazing. 
your special guy will be proud to be around such a great looking partner when both of you go out together. Dress up, smell great, and you'll look fab in his arms. Each time one of his friends or colleagues drops his jaw in awe of you. Your man will be proud that he's dating a girl who's as gorgeous and awesome as you. 5. Flirt with him. Guys love to feel loved and desired. One great way to do this is to flirt with him as if you were just getting to know each other, even if you've been together for years. There are lots of ways to do this. 4. You can compliment his looks, give him little shows of affection and then play hard to get or even gently tease him. Again. However, being genuine is crucial. Need some flirty ideas to get you started. See our article on flirting for easy instructions. 6. Stroke his ego. Men love it when their partner makes them feel strong and important. You can do this by giving him chances to prove himself. It may sound silly, but even asking your man to help with things you could probably do yourself can work here. For example, getting him to help change the light bulb or open a jar of pickles can make him feel like a valued provider. Some men may not pick up on your gesture right away, so give him a compliment as he finishes the task. Even something as simple as how strong, accompanied by a kiss on the cheek can get the point across. Expert tip. While individuals vary, generally speaking, males have a greater need to feel respected while females have a greater need to be adored. Alvina Louis, MFT. Relationship expert. 7. Show your affection through touch. Subtle touches can be better for communicating your love than words. Start by touching him casually whenever the opportunity presents itself. For instance, if he says something you disagree with, you can shove him playfully and say shut up. As you spend more time together, touch him more often and in more intimate ways. Touch his shoulders and chest if you're standing up. Touch his leg if you're sitting down. Let your hand linger for a few seconds before taking it away. Start hugging him to greet him and say goodbye. Finally, if you're ready to move into serious territory, you can kiss him. 5. Whenever you touch, make sure you really mean it, a forced, insincere touch won't make him feel special. The limit on your touching should be whatever you and your special guy are comfortable with. Don't feel pressured to move too fast. Stick to physical shows of affection that don't leave you uneasy and allow your relationship to progress naturally. Method 2. Showing him you care. Download article. 1. Be yourself. Nothing makes a guy feel special like showing him your true self. This is especially true if you don't normally show it to other people. Be silly, be strange, be wild. Whatever you feel like being. This shows how comfortable you feel around him, which in turn will make him lower his guard as well. Timing is important here. While you should start to lower your guard. Once it's clear that you like each other, you shouldn't immediately start launching into your most bizarre habits. This can be confusing. Instead, introduce these things gradually so you both have a chance to get used to each other's true selves. 2. Be confident. Ironically, believing in yourself can make your special guy feel more valued. Don't feel nervous or pressured to make your man feel special. Instead, stay 
relaxed and casual. Be friendly and act genuinely interested in what he has to say, but don't, for instance, force yourself to laugh at a joke you don't find funny. Try to keep eye contact with him when you're having a conversation. Smile when he makes you feel good. These simple gestures show him that you're confident in your own skin and confident loving him. On the other hand, avoiding eye contact, staring at your feet, or nervously hanging on his every word will get the opposite result. Guys sometimes aren't the best at reading other people's emotions, so being nervous, timid, or quiet can make it seem like there's something wrong with him. 3. Stand up for your man. Guys are often pressured to act strong and hyper-confident, so being able to take some of this burden off his shoulders can be greatly appreciated. 4. Example, if someone in public disrespects him or is rude, you don't have to meekly stand by and wait for him to handle it. Feel free to stand up for him with your words and actions. This will make him feel like you are willing to go out of your way to protect him. Which shows how much you care about him. 4. Give him your support when he's down. Guys sometimes don't get lots of opportunities to express anxieties and feelings of vulnerability. They often feel pressure to act like nothing ever worries them. They may even have been taught that showing vulnerability, through fear, crying, etc., is a sign of weakness. You know better, so make sure he knows that you'll always be there for him. Let him know that, around you, he doesn't have to be strong all of the time. Offering a hand to hold and a shoulder to cry on when things are not going well for him can make him feel like the most special guy in the world. Some men may not take every opportunity to share their fears and anxieties with you. Try not to feel unwanted if he pretends that everything is fine when it's obviously not. Offering your help, even if he declines it, shows that you care about him and are always eager to help him. Be ready to support him when he does ask for your help. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. This can't be stated enough, you can, and should, take your special guy out. Sometimes. Don't simply wait for him to take you out. While this once the norm, today. Partners in a relationship are expected to share dating duties. Opinions vary on the subject of PDA, public displays of affection. Some guys love to show off by hugging and kissing their ladies in public, while others are embarrassed by this kind of behavior. If you're not sure how your man feels, just ask him. Pay. Attention to his reaction when you do give him some PDA, he may claim to enjoy it but flush with embarrassment when it actually happens. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to be a conservative girl. Download article. Co-authored by Elle Monis and Amy Bobinger. Last updated. The 8th of December, 2023 approved. Clothing. Lifestyle. Political choices. Expert Q&A. Interested in becoming a conservative girl or girlfriend. Being conservative is. Multifaceted, but it mostly comes down to valuing tradition, modesty, and self-reliance. As a conservative girl. You might support conservative policies, dress more modestly, and live a more traditional lifestyle, although it's completely up to you how conservative you want to be. 
not sure where to start. Don't worry, we've got everything you need. To know to embrace your conservative side. Method 1. Clothing Download article 1. Opt for clothing that covers your body from the shoulders to the knees. When you're dressing conservatively, it's important not to show too much skin, especially your shoulders, cleavage, midriff, and upper legs. If the weather is hot, opt for loose, flowy clothing to help keep you cool, rather than skimpy clothing that will leave you exposed. 1. Short sleeves are usually fine when you're dressing conservatively, but if you're in doubt whether that's appropriate, opt for an elbow length or long-sleeved shirt to be on the safe side. In some places, skirts that stop just above the knee are considered conservative. However, in some cultures, showing your knees or even your ankles would still be considered revealing. 2. Need some style inspiration. Look to chic, conservative style icons like Audrey Hepburn, Coco Chanel, and Grace Kelly for ideas of how to dress modestly while still looking stylish. 2. Add layers if you need a little more coverage. If you're concerned that your favorite Clothes show too much skin, mix and match them with layering pieces to help you cover up. Layers are also good if your clothing is sheer or transparent. 3. For instance, you can wear a cami underneath a v-neck shirt to ensure you don't show too much cleavage, and a long tank top is a great option. If you think your shirt might ride up and expose your midriff. You can also lay a lightweight shirt, blouse, or scarf over a pretty spaghetti strap dress to cover your shoulders and chest. 3. Avoid wearing clothes that fit very tightly. Sometimes, you can show too much of your figure even when you're completely covered up. If you want to dress conservatively, avoid styles that fit tightly around your bust, waist, or hips. However, you don't necessarily have to wear shapeless, baggy clothes, either. Instead, stick to styles that skim lightly over your figure. Not only will this be more comfortable and modest, but it tends to be a more flattering look, as well. If you're wearing leggings, yoga pants, or another style of pants that fit snugly to your body, Opt for a long tunic or a blouse that covers your crotch and rear. 4. Wear mostly neutrals with a few pops of colors. Dressing conservatively typically means gravitating toward tasteful neutral shades like black, white, beige, tan, blue, gray, and ivory. However, if you love bright colors, you don't have to stop wearing them. Just wear one brightly colored piece at a time, and keep the rest of your outfit toned down. 4. For instance, if you're going to work, you might wear a gray blazer, slacks, and shoes, with a magenta blouse. On the other hand, you might opt for a white blouse and add color with a statement necklace, instead. 5. Keep your accessories minimal. If you want to look conservative, don't pile on all of your accessories at once. Instead, stick to two or three pretty pieces when you're getting dressed, like a string of pearls, a simple ring, and a nice watch. It's okay to use bold jewelry to add pizzards to your outfit, but stick to one statement piece at a time. If you're wearing a chunky, colorful necklace, for instance, you might skip wearing earrings, or just wear a pair of subtle studs. Tell us what you think. What is your go-to accessory when you want to add a touch of elegance to your conservative outfit? 
String of pearls. Simple ring. Nice watch. Tasteful earrings. Sleek belt. 42 total votes. 6. Stick to practical footwear. For the most part, it's prudent to avoid stiletto heels or flashy footwear that's hard to walk in. Instead, opt for tasteful flats or low pumps. Although ankle and knee-high boots can look conservative depending on how the rest of your outfit is styled. 5. For instance, knee-high boots would be the perfect way to complete a fall outfit if you were wearing a knee-length skirt, dark tights or leggings, and a sweater. 7. Wear your hair well-groomed in a classic style. There's no one perfect haircut that will make you look conservative, but avoid getting a severe cut, like a close-cropped style, or a style that's shaved on one side. However, styles like a sleek, straight bob, loose waves, a low bun, and long curls can all be well-suited for a conservative girl, as long as you keep your hair clean and neatly styled each day. 6. If you color your hair, opt for natural-looking shades, including highlights, rather than bold colors like green, pink, or purple. With a range of smart tech to choose from and our expert teams by your side, we can help you take steps to reduce your energy bills and our collective carbon footprint. A path to better energy. We're taking millions row for it, UK homes one a path to energy that's B-E-T-T-F-O-R-Y-O-U-W-A-N-D-T-H-P-L-A-N-E. Sponsored by OVO Energy. Learn more. 8. Opt for light, tasteful makeup if you wear any. You won't look very conservative if you wear a full glam look in the daytime. Instead. Stick to a simple routine, such as concealer, tinted moisturizer, mascara, blush, and lip gloss. 7. It's okay to wear a little more makeup for special occasions. For instance, you might add eyeshadow, eyeliner, and lipstick to your normal makeup routine if you're going on a date or attending a wedding. Tip. If you paint your nails, opt for clear or pale pink nail polish. 9. Cover up any tattoos if you have them. Visible tattoos don't look very conservative, so. If you already have them, try to cover them with makeup or your clothing. If you don't have any tattoos, or if the ones you have are easily covered, avoid getting anything new. That would be hard to cover up like tattoos on your hands, face, forearms, or chest. 8. For the most part, visible piercings wouldn't be considered conservative. However, a small, tasteful nose ring might be an exception, depending on your personal style. Method 2. Lifestyle Download Article 1. Go to bed early and rise early each day. If you want to live a conservative lifestyle, it won't do to stay up all night partying or watching cat videos. In order to be at your most productive during the day, go to bed at a reasonable hour and try to stick to the same bedtime each night. Then, wake at the same time every morning, even the weekends. 9. Keeping a regular routine will help you sleep better at night. Tell us what you think. When winding down for bed, which activity do you find most relaxing? Drinking non-caffeinated tea. Listening to soothing music. Dimming the lights in my room. Reading a book. Stretching or meditating. 35 total votes. Switch your home energy to OVO and join the Power Move Challenge to use your energy at greener times of the day.
you will get money off your energy bills and help take pressure off the grid. Smart meter required. Pound one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 plus earned in rewards. OVO customers peak have earned over one pound million for using energy at G R E E N E R O F T I M E S. Sponsored by OVO. Learn more. Two. Eat a healthy diet full of lean proteins, fruits, and vegetables. You can apply conservative living to everything, even to the way you eat, so try to avoid making a habit of binging on indulgent treats. About half of what you eat should be nutritious fruits and vegetables like leafy greens, avocados, apples, and legumes. Another quarter should be lean proteins like chicken, turkey, tofu, and fish and the final quarter should be whole grains, like wheat bread, quinoa, and brown rice. 10. Preparing your meals at home is a great way to have more control over the foods that you eat. 3. Avoid drinking alcohol excessively, if at all. Drinking too much alcohol can be bad for your health but it can also lead to reckless behavior and a lapse in judgment. If you want to maintain a conservative lifestyle, it's important to avoid this loss of control. If you do want to enjoy any alcoholic beverages, do so in moderation. 11. For instance, if you have a glass of wine with dinner, ask for a glass of water after you finish it. If you'd still like another glass when you finish the water, then it's fine. 4. Take dating slowly. To be conservative in your romantic life, take your time before committing to a relationship with another person. Make sure that you only date someone because you really like them and can imagine yourself being with them in the long term. Also, avoid rushing into a physical relationship with anyone to avoid the appearance of being promiscuous. If you're already in a relationship, take some time to evaluate whether the two of you have the same long-term goals and values. 5. Consume thoughtful media that promotes family values. These days, it can be hard. To avoid depictions of sex and violence in TV and movies, and social media can be full of a steady stream of content that's opposed to a conservative lifestyle. Try to tailor what you're watching and consuming so you're only taking in wholesome entertainment, as much as possible. 12. For instance, you might unfollow anyone on your friend list who Regularly posts memes that you find offensive. You might also avoid watching movies that are rated R, especially if they got that rating because they're bloody, have foul language, or are filled with nudity. Consider the music you listen to, as well. For instance, try to listen music that's free of profanity, and avoid artists who promote unhealthy views of women or society in general. 6. Be prudent with your finances. Being financially conservative is smart for everyone. But it can be hard to do. Make a budget and stick to it. Each time you get a paycheck, pay your bills before you make any purchases, so you will know exactly what you have left over. Then, Set aside a little of what's left in a savings account so you will be prepared in case of an unforeseen emergency. 13. Also, try to get in the habit of limiting any unnecessary purchases. Method. 3. Political choices. Download article. 1. Understand that you don't have to support every conservative cause. You can 
consider yourself politically conservative without necessarily agreeing with everything. That would be considered conservative. There's no one right way to be a conservative, so. Take some time to learn about different issues, and evaluate your beliefs to determine which ones you support, as well as which ones you don't. For instance, social conservatives typically believe that abortion should be restricted or banned, and that gay marriage should not be legal. However, you can be politically conservative, which means you believe in things like less government interference and a free market economy, without necessarily being a social conservative. 2. Champion causes that promote individual liberty. Political conservatives believe that your individual freedoms are the most important thing that needs to be protected. That means you would oppose any laws that allow the government or other people to infringe on your freedom. 14. For instance, most political conservatives oppose strict gun control laws that might impede the Second Amendment right to bear arms. 3. Support initiatives that limit the government's role. One of the most universal beliefs among conservatives is that a smaller government is more efficient and effective. This might mean limiting laws that regulate environmental policies, for instance, or supporting privatized healthcare. 15. Did you know? Conservatives are typically in favor of lowered taxes as part of a more streamlined government. 4. Study and support the free market system. If you're an economic conservative, you believe that a free market promotes competition. You likely also believe that such competition leads to a healthier economy, with more jobs overall, as well as a higher standard of living for society as a whole. 16. This would also involve being against social programs that inhibit a free market, like universal healthcare. 5. Emphasize personal responsibility over social support or government regulation. In addition to having individual liberty, as a conservative, you will also likely believe that each person should be responsible for their own actions. This might mean holding people accountable for things they've done wrong, but it also might mean being opposed to certain social programs. 17. For instance, you might support the death penalty for certain crimes, but you might be against programs that allow people to stay on welfare for long periods of time. You might also oppose amnesty for immigrants who came into the country illegally, even if you support immigration reform that would allow people an easier path to become citizens of your country. 6. Place a high priority on traditional values. Typically, conservatives see themselves as being responsible for holding up traditional morals and conventions. For instance, you might be opposed to abortion or gay marriage, or you might support legislation limiting the kind of content that can be shown on websites that cater to young children. 18. You might also oppose any interpretations of the Constitution that you don't feel accurately represent the Founding Fathers. Original Intent Expert Q&A Question How can a teenager dress more modestly? El Monas Image Consultant Expert Answer Social media has transformed how trends filter down to teens and it all moves very quickly. A quick internet search can give you a list of trends where you can decide which is the best fit for yourself. Don't automatically count out something that seems to show too much.
For example, if you pair a crop top with high waisted mom jeans or joggers, you're getting far more coverage while still staying up to date. Not helpful 1 helpful 5. Question. Is it okay if I dress and act more conservatively, but have progressive political beliefs? Community answer. Of course it is. There are no hard and fast rules about what a conservative person must dress like and what a progressive person must dress like. Furthermore, Plenty of people fall somewhere in between the two on the political spectrum. Not helpful 6 helpful 48. Question. How shall I keep my temper under control and still have composure in irritable times, when bullies are teasing me, etc. Anime bread. Top answer. If you can, try to just avoid those people. If you see them, walk away. If they're in your class, just ignore them, or seek help from a teacher or guidance counselor. How to look beautiful in middle school. Girls. Download article. Parts. 1. Tapping your inner beautiful. 2. Being beautiful on the outside. 3. Being beautiful on the inside. Plus show 5 more. Other sections. Video. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Ivy Boyd. Last updated, the 20th of February, 2024 approved. Being beautiful is a title that every girl wishes for. Usually, beautiful women are seen. With lots of styling, designer clothes, and makeup. Here's how to be a beautiful girl in middle school, without being a model. Part 1. Tapping your inner beautiful. Download article. 1. Look in the mirror. Find something you think is beautiful about yourself and flaunt it. Do you have gorgeous hair? Leave it down on your shoulders. Dazzling eyes. Brighten them with mascara. Elegant figure. Wear clothes that flatter your shape. Choose something that you find pretty about yourself to accentuate and draw attention away from things you don't like. 2. Find ways to hide or draw attention away from what you don't like. Do you have large hips? Wear a black dress or a belt. Do you have heavy thighs? Wear a bold printed top. Do you have a smaller bus line? Wear some colored skinny jeans. If there's something that you don't like about your body, you can mask it, but just remember to have confidence. Part 2. Being beautiful on the outside. Download article. 1. Find your style. Are you girly? Wear floral patterns, pastel colors, skirts, and dresses. Preppy. Try polos, chinos, capris, knee-length skirts and dresses and oxfords. Edgy. Leather jackets, mini skirts, short tight dresses, band tees, lace skirts, and skinny jeans. Shop at stores that sell clothes that you like, not just trends. Dress to flatter your body. And dress for the season. You wouldn't want to be caught in the snow in a mini skirt. Would you? 2. Be natural. Don't wear too much makeup or too tight or short clothes. You're just a kid. After all, a lot of girls wear too much makeup super trendy clothes, and high heels just to fit in. But if that's not who you are, don't be it. Express yourself. If you like music, wear guitar earrings. If you like art, wear paint-splattered jeans. Be yourself. 
3. Make an effort to look nice in your way. Don't stop taking showers, washing your hair, and wearing deodorant because you're being yourself or making a statement. It's unhealthy. Take showers and wash everywhere. Shave if you're allowed and it's necessary. Don't shave just to shave. However, you might wish to. Shaving is a choice and isn't necessary to. Be beautiful. Wash your hair as frequently as you think you need to. If you are unsure, ask your hairdresser, your mom, or even a trusted friend, with healthy hair. Get a trim every 6 to 8 weeks to prevent split ends and avoid heat styling. As much as possible. Use deodorant, antiperspirant, or combination every morning and after. P. You can use perfume if you want, but be careful not to overdo it. 4. Ask your mom to help you wear makeup. If she says yes, don't wear too much. 4. Middle school, wear chapstick, light lip gloss, and concealer. Don't use too much, it may look heavy. Remember that wearing makeup is your choice and you don't have to if you don't want to. Part 3. Being beautiful on the inside. Download article. 1. Use body language. Body language is the way we communicate with people without words. Use kind, open, warm, and inviting body language. There is nothing people hate. More than a rude, snotty, thinks she's above the world kind of girl. When you sit, plant your feet firmly on the ground and place your hands on your lap. Avoid crossing your arms or sitting sloppily, lazily, or not being involved. It makes people think you can't be bothered to talk to them, and that's the last thing you want. 2. Make eye contact. When people are talking to you, make eye contact with them. It lets them know that you are paying attention and listening to them. Try to break eye contact. Occasionally, or else it's creepy. 3. Pay attention in class. Teachers appreciate it when students pay attention during their lessons. It lets them know they are doing their job. Also, if they ask questions, raise your hands. But only if you know the answer because if they call on you, you could wind up. Super embarrassed. 4. Be carefree. Don't care what people think about you. Just have fun. Just remember, you have friends who like you for who you are, so who cares what those snobs think about you. 5. Be nice. Don't look down on people who are different than you are. They are just expressing themselves just like you are. Also, don't pick fights with popular people for making fun of you. If you get into a fight with them, you are just as bad as they are. The best thing to do would be to just walk away. Be the bigger person. 6. Be a risk taker. Don't be afraid to be bold. If someone dares you to do something, as long as it's safe, do it. Try bungee jumping, rock climbing, skydiving or scuba diving. 7. Be responsible. Do your homework and be safe. However, don't be a nag. If you see someone doing something wrong, quietly walk off and tell someone in authority. Don't go up to them and tell them off. 8. Be well behaved. It is more fun to behave than not, don't get into trouble. Part 4. Beautiful Extras Download Article 1. Keep your room, locker, and workspace clean. 
Decorate your room with posters and cute pillows and blankets. Decorate your locker with stickers, magnets, whiteboards, pictures, and mirrors. When you are in class keep your supplies for your current class. For example, a binder and notebook, and put the rest of your stuff on your desk. Clean your room and your locker regularly. It will be much easier to find stuff. 2. Get cool electronics. Get a cell phone, a tablet, an MP3 player, maybe an iPod, a laptop, and an reader. Get cool cases for all your stuff with things like animals, snacks, and things you like, for example, Moria Elizabeth. Charge your devices regularly. It's awful. When your battery dies when you're in the middle of doing your homework on your laptop. 3. Have nice school supplies. Get binders, notebooks, pencil cases, folders, and caddies in. Pretty colors and patterns like pink, blue, yellow, orange, and green. Patterns include cats, polka dots, stripes, chevron, and cool geometric patterns. 4 4. Have fun. Do cool activities with your friends and don't take things too seriously. Part 5. Skin Care Download Article 1. Use face wash twice a day, in the morning, and before bed. Make sure this matches what you need to fix, whether it's oily skin, dry skin, acne, pimples, or protection against breakouts. If you don't use face cleansers at least once a day, you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll develop skin issues. If you have sensitive skin, Simple is a fantastic British brand that helps even the most sensitive skin in need of major protection. 2. Use a face mask every three days one weeks. This gives your skin a natural glow and protects from dirt and grime. Use with caution, however, exfoliating before at least three days since your last use can cause breakouts, as your skin is over exfoliated. 3. Moisturize. Find a good brand of moisturizer for your face and put it on daily to protect from any dirt and grime that wants to enter your pores. It also leaves your skin silky soft and smooth as a bonus, so lather up. Moisturizer can also be used as a base for makeup instead of BB cream. 4. Use lotion after showers. Put lotion on your arms and legs for a naturally glowing, smooth texture to your skin. Adding this to your shoulders and neck can also be a good place. In the summer, lotions with built-in UV protection will double as sunscreen. Without the sticky feel and salty smell. 5. Wear chapstick. Wear it most of the time to prevent your lips from drying up and Bleeding. Especially during winter, apply chapstick every night before you go to bed and when you wake up and carry one with you throughout the day. Part 6. Hair Care. Download Article 1. Shampoo and condition according to your hair type. And if you can't find some for your hair, you must have something really special because nowadays there's natural heat protectants, hydration, featherweight, dye protection, natural hair lighteners, etc. You can find practically anything. Just remember not to be afraid to mix and match types. If you have both frizzy and thick hair, combining a featherweight shampoo with a frizz control conditioner will work amazingly. Don't use two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, because while the conditioner is meant to stay in your hair for a long period, shampoo can only stay in for 10 seconds.
It's like dividing by zero, you can't do it, and shouldn't try. 2. Avoid heat products unless necessary. This means blow dryers, straighteners, crimpers, and curlers forward slash curling irons. Unless you need it, i.e. a curly piece of hair mixed with straight hair, or a straight piece mixed with a curly piece, or there's a special occasion, i.e. a dance, a wedding, a funeral. There are plenty of ways to naturally dry, straighten, curl, and crimp your hair. YouTube and WikiHow provide many ways to do so. 3. Don't dye your hair. This can permanently damage it and will give your hair an odd texture over time. It's unhealthy for your hair, even if you wash it and use hair nutritious products in it. Just because it looks nice doesn't mean it'll be nice. Beware. You don't have to do what the trends are just to fit in. Make natural hair the thing. 4. Use leave-in shampoo and conditioner. Leave-in shampoo keeps your hair less frizzy and silky smooth, while leave-in conditioner keeps your hair healthy, frizz-free, and quite soft and manageable. These contain vitamins and nutrients that are essential for hair. And while normal shampoo and conditioner give them to your hair, it doesn't last the whole day. Part 7. Using Makeup Download article. You're in middle school, so this section will only go over the basics. Never feel like you need to put on 5 pounds of makeup to be beautiful. You can use little to no makeup and look gorgeous either way. Makeup doesn't make you beautiful. Ever heard of, OMG? Her makeup makes her look like a clown. But that's just for thick makeup. 1. Apply moisturizer or BB cream. With moisturizer, squeeze a bit onto the tips of your fingers, rub all your fingers together, and apply evenly on your face and neck. With BB cream, squeeze some onto the center of your forehead, nose, either cheek and chin. Then, use your fingers to even this out. Don't forget any spots, or you might have a lighter or darker patch of skin. 2. Apply foundation and powder. Find a foundation that is a bit lighter than your skin. Tone. When applying, coat the liquid on two problem spots, bumps, acne, red spots, dark eye circles, and spread it with your finger. Don't blend this into your skin, just coat it on. While it still is unnatural. Next, apply powder. This powder should match your skin as best as possible. Powder your entire face, even going over your foundation. Going over your foundation with powder is what makes it look natural while it's still caked on. 3. Apply lip product. This is quite simple, all you have to do is fill in your lips. Use the thick edge to fill in the main part, and the tipped edge to get into the corners of your lips. If your lips are smaller or thin and the lipstick is dark, use the tipped edge to create the shape you want. It seems like it'd look strange, but it's a fantastic illusion. You'd have to look close to notice. Bright colors and nudes are popular in warm seasons, while darker colors are popular in cold seasons. 4. Apply mascara. You can use clear or black mascara for your top lashes, and clear for your bottoms. Take the brush out of the tube and rub it against the edges. Then position yourself in front of a mirror to monitor what you're doing. Take the mascara brush and sweep it over your eyelashes the same amount of time on either eye. Then, take your 
Brush and hold it vertically, rubbing against your lashes to avoid clumping. Another way to avoid clumping is to take your brush horizontally and sweep it left to right on the tips of your lashes. Part 8. Maintaining Hygiene Download Article 1. Consider picking body wash scents by season. Smelling like a tropical forest won't always do in the winter, and smelling like a candied apple or peppermint chocolate isn't the best option in summer. 2. Brush your teeth. Ideally, aim to brush and use mouthwash along with brushing to ensure all bacteria are washed away. Floss regularly to keep your gums healthy. Get routine dental checkups to make sure everything is in tip-top shape. 3. Wash your hands. Throughout the day, all sorts of nasty bacteria can accumulate on your hands, and this is very unhygienic, especially during flu season when everyone is coughing and sneezing, spreading germs everywhere. Wash your hands regularly and after coughing or sneezing to keep them clean. Also, having dirty hands and touching your face can lead to acne. Breakouts, keeping them clean can help prevent this. Expert Q&A Ask a question Submit Video Tips Always remember to pull your shoulders back, stand straight, and smile. If you shrug or slouch, people might think you are shy and insecure. Try to look as natural as you can. Always smile, that's the best makeup you can put on, and it's free. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. Above all, be kind. Beauty is about who you are on the inside as much as how you look on the outside. If you're kind to others, your inner beauty will shine through. Pay attention to what you eat and try to eat healthy, balanced meals. You'll be amazed how great you look and feel when you eat healthy. How to act around girls. Download article. Methods. 1. Gaining confidence. 2. Communicating effectively. 3. Behaving appropriately. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Eddie Baller. Last updated, the 20th of January, 2024 approved. Whether you're approaching a girl you don't know or trying to maintain your cool. Around one you're interested in, one thing is for sure, talking to girls can be hard but not. Impossible. You just have to remember that girls are just like anyone else in your life. They are humans too, being around them won't seem so scary after all. By having confidence in yourself and practicing some key communication skills, you'll start to feel relaxed and comfortable around any and every girl. Method 1. Gaining Confidence Download article. 1. Be yourself. As much as you want to gain the approval of a girl, altering your personality. To do so isn't the way to go. Even if it works in the short term, you'll feel fake and happy. And chances are she'll eventually find out who you really are. Know who you are. Own up. To your thoughts and feelings in life. Being genuine and self-assured is appealing to girls. And will make you feel good about yourself, too. 1. Avoid becoming overly generous or aggressive in an attempt to win her. Over. This can come across as fake or even offensive not the way you. Want to portray yourself. 2. Put less attention into pleasing girls, too. Appreciate your flaws and don't let them distract you. If you like yourself and become comfortable with who you are, 
then you will be more comfortable around other people. And even if things don't go well, it won't matter as much. Only you can make yourself happy. If you like yourself, that's the most important thing. 2. Clean yourself up. Maintaining proper hygiene makes you look and feel better. Take a shower in the morning. Wash your hair. Put on deodorant and clean clothes before you go outside. When you're around girls, the last thing you want to worry about is how you smell. Keep yourself clean to make sure it's never a problem. You may choose to put a little perfume or cologne on your neck and shoulders. If you do, use it sparingly. You don't want to overwhelm the people around you. 3. Dress well. If possible, go out and find some clothes that are right for you. They don't have to be expensive, but they should fit well and feel comfortable on you. Besides, making you look good, clothes that you like wearing make you feel more confident and able to focus on girls instead of your appearance. 3. Try observing those around you for ideas on what's fashionable, but remember that a good outfit is one that reflects your own unique style. Ask store employees for feedback. Ask politely and they'll be happy to guide you to a proper fit. 4. Do what you enjoy. You can have fun with girls doing what they want to do, but remember to take time out for yourself and continue to do what makes you happy. If that's watching science fiction and reading comics, go ahead and do it. Never feel ashamed of your interests. Pursuing them is what makes you happier more genuine and more pleasant to be around. It's natural to find yourself getting completely absorbed in a girl you like. Remember to take a step back some days and give yourself some space to focus on doing something you love, like playing sports or a video game. 5. Relax. Being tense around girls makes them tense too. If you're looking around trying to figure out what to say or how to escape the situation, you aren't focusing on the girl. Breathe deeply before approaching and when not speaking. Stay present and focus your attention on the girl, instead of on an anxious feeling. Stay positive and remind yourself that nothing bad will happen, because chances are, everything will be just. Fine. 4. Most people are absorbed in their own lives and aren't out to embarrass you or make you feel bad. If you think you've made a mistake or embarrassed yourself, don't worry about it, chances are, everyone else will forget it ever happened. 5. 6. Be honest with your intentions. Starting out befriending a girl you're interested in is a good idea, but if you have feelings for her, don't hide them. Work towards starting a relationship, paying attention to her. If you hide your feelings, she won't know how you feel and can feel betrayed or in a bad position when she does find out. Conversely, don't. Lead on a girl if you only want to be friends. Remember the tried and true, if somewhat cheesy, saying, honesty is the best policy. 6. Remember to respect her boundaries. Don't push your feelings upon her. If she doesn't return your interest, she'll be grateful and will be more likely to want to be friends, even if she doesn't return your feelings. Method 2. Communicating effectively Download article 1. Maintain eye contact As you approach a girl to start a conversation, look her in the eyes. 
This displays confidence and, when she is speaking, an interest in what she is saying. 7. Don't stare, however, especially when you're not having a conversation with her. Look at her enough to show that you're paying attention, then look away. Don't worry if this is difficult at first, eye contact can feel a little awkward for everyone. To practice eye contact, start with a mirror, then move on to friends and strangers. Eye contact is difficult but it prevents you from getting caught looking at the rest of her body. Plus, it's polite, engaging, and a great way to show your interest and respect in a girl. 2. Engage girls in conversation. Greet girls just like you would greet anyone else, say hello and bringing up appropriate topics. Some great icebreakers include asking for opinion on clothing, talking about a class you share, complimenting a girl on making a good point, or offering to help her. 8. Do this at times to gain confidence around girls and build towards deeper conversations. Everyone enjoys a good conversation, and girls will be impressed with your confidence and outgoing personality. 3. Listen actively. Truly listening to what she says and means will be appreciated by a girl. Put down your phone and try to grasp the complete meaning of what she's saying. Don't. Interrupt. Show interest by nodding and responding when she's finished. No one likes. Having a conversation with someone who doesn't listen to them, so make sure to extend this common courtesy to any girls you talk to. 9. Respond by paraphrasing the message, such as by saying, so what? Your saying is, to show that you get the important point of the girl's message. When you respond, be respectful and non-judgmental no matter how. You feel. Really consider her thoughts and opinions before you answer. To show your thoughtfulness. 4. Show genuine interest in people. To grow trust between you and a girl, communicate. On a deeper level with them. Ask a girl about herself, her interests, and her desires. Show. That you're interested in learning about her as a person. This makes you appear more confident and helps girls feel more comfortable around you. As an added bonus, this takes a lot of the pressure of maintaining the conversation off of you. All you have to do is ask questions and listen. 10. A good question, for example, is to ask her what kind of music she likes. If she likes the same music you can share that interest. Even if you have different tastes, you can say, I've never really listened to that genre. Can you give any recommendations to a newbie? 5. Be attentive to her feelings. When you show a girl that you're interested in her life, she may open up to you about something that's troubling her. This is a huge show of trust. So, it's important to listen with interest and respond to her empathetically. Never make her feel judged or ridiculed. You wouldn't want to feel that way, so you know she wouldn't either. 11. For example, you can say, that's okay, the test was really hard. You did your best. Encourage her in her goals, too. If she wants to be a photographer, encourage her to do it no matter what you think of the idea. Say, that's awesome you have such big dreams. 6. Make her laugh. Humor is an effective way of being charming and charismatic. Engaging in banter with girls will make things less awkward as you learn about each other and paves the way to talk about more serious issues. You don't have to be a natural comedian, 
and definitely don't force it. Try to make some witty observations or recall funny tales from your past to make her laugh and ease any awkwardness. 12. Not all humor is appropriate in every situation. For example, avoid telling crude or sexist jokes around a girl you've just met. Don't focus on just being funny. Humor can help you attract a girl, but it should feel natural and not like you're always forcing it. 13. As you spend more time with a girl, you'll learn what she finds funny and develop inside jokes between you and her. Be patient and see how your senses of humor play off each other. You'll be cracking each other up in no time. Method 3. Behaving appropriately. Download article 1. Respect personal space. When first meeting a girl, a handshake is enough. Be relaxed. And always use common sense, such as don't crowd up against her, bring your face near hers, or touch inappropriate areas such as the face. As you build your relationship, use your judgment as to how much physical contact is welcome. Start with gentle hand and Shoulder brushes during conversations and standing close during opportune times such as parties and concerts. 14. If you desire a relationship, ramp up your contact, slowly and naturally, as you go. Then you can try hugging and flirting if she is okay with it. If you're interested in starting a relationship with her, don't be afraid to. Try a bit of flirting. Remember to back off if she seems uninterested or uncomfortable. Don't touch a girl if it's not desired. Respect her personal boundaries. And pull back if she feels uncomfortable. 2. Display good manners. Behave with grace around girls. Inappropriate actions including swearing, farting, or telling rude jokes are sure to make a girl not want to be around you. Show respect and good manners by holding open the door and saying please and thank you. 3. Treat everyone the same. Talk to everyone, boys, trans people, and so on, the same way you'd talk to a girl. Show everyone respect and kindness and listen to what they have to say. Avoid starting fights violence isn't a good way to impress anyone. When girls are around, they'll see how genuine and mature you are. 15. This is hard to do when arguing or encountering someone you don't like, but try to avoid outbursts of emotion. Breathe deeply and control what you say. When all is said and done, you'll be proud of yourself for taking the high road, even if a girl isn't around to be impressed by it. 4. Don't talk about people behind their backs. Talking badly about someone who isn't present has the same effect as an unpleasant confrontation in person. And sometimes it can be even worse. Avoid gossiping. Sharing negative. Information will make you look immature to girls and cause them to wonder if you talk about them too when they're not around. Continue to be respectful as much as possible. In return, don't speak negatively about girls or share their secrets with your friends. This information may get back to them and give you a bad reputation. Show them your trustworthiness and they'll soon consider you a loyal friend. Expert Q&A Question How do I become comfortable around girls? Eddie Baller Dating Coach Expert Answer Remind yourself that girls aren't magical or mysterious beings. They're just people, 
and the more you view them that way, the less nervous you'll be around them. The more you practice talking to girls, the better you'll get at it and the easier it will be. Not helpful 3 helpful 13. Question. How can I be confident around girls? Eddie Baller. Dating coach. Expert answer. Strong eye contact is number one. People who lack confidence typically cannot hold very strong eye contact. Taking bold moves is another way to show confidence, like putting your arm around somebody and not waiting for a sign. For every single moment just to try something. Taking that initiative shows confidence, because you're not walking on eggshells and you're not worried about every single moment and doing the wrong thing. Speaking strongly is another good one, you don't want to have a fake voice, but you should use your full, natural voice. Standing straight, keeping your shoulders back, and not having your hands in your pocket also projects confidence. Not helpful 5 helpful 14. Question. How do I make a girl love me if I am black? Tasha Rub, LMSW. Licensed master social worker. Expert answer. Realize that you cannot make other people feel or do things they do not want to. The more self-confidence and self-esteem you have, the more you will be happy. With who you are, regardless of race or ethnicity. This will show through to others as you interact with them and you will attract the right person for you. Not helpful 56 helpful 165. See more answers. Ask a question. Submit. Testing your knowledge. Impress a girl quiz. Tips. Don't panic if you do something embarrassing. Own up to your mistake, laugh it off and rebound with humor. Making light of the situation will make you and the people around you, including girls, more comfortable. Be especially gentle around shy girls. Break conversation and touch barriers slowly. Give her space. Pay attention to her body language in order to gauge how she is feeling and how you should act. Show more tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to understand teen boys. Download article. Methods. 1. Understanding teen boys as a teenage girl. 2. Understanding teen boys as a parent. 3. Managing Differences and Conflicts Other Sections Expert Q&A Tips and Warnings Related Articles References Article Summary Co-authored by Wits End Parenting Last updated, the 15th of July, 2024 References Boys go through a number of changes during their teenage years which can make them behave in unusual ways. Whether you're a parent or a teen yourself, you may want to better understand teenage boys. Educate yourself about the changes boys are going through and try to be understanding. You can manage conflict through open conversation, assert yourself, and set boundaries as needed. Method 1. Understanding Teen Boys as a Teenage Girl Download Article 1. Familiarize yourself with the changes teenage boys undergo. Just as you're going through changes as a teenager, boys in your grade are also experiencing changes. Ask your health teacher where to find reading information. You can also ask your parents or an older male relative you trust, such as a brother or male cousin. You may notice some physical changes in the boys in your class. There.
voices may get deeper and they may begin to grow hair on their faces and underarms. Boys also undergo sexual changes. They will start to release testosterone and begin to experience erections. Understand that they may be embarrassed by this, just like you may be initially embarrassed by your period. 2. Remember that teenage boys are insecure. While puberty is a normal part of growing up, it is normal to have some insecurity about puberty. Teenage boys in your grade may be embarrassed by physical and other changes they are undergoing, so be understanding of this. 1. Teenage boys may experience erections without cause, or their voices may squeak when they talk. They may get embarrassed by this. Don't tease the boys in your grade about puberty, no matter how tempting it may be. After all, you wouldn't want to be teased by the changes you're going through. 3. Look for common ground. While you may feel your experiences couldn't be more different than the experiences of teenage boys, there is actually a lot of common ground. You can better understand teenage boys if you identify areas where you're going through similar changes. 2. Like you, boys are beginning to grow hair on the underarms and pubic region. Boys also experience mood swings and feelings of anger and frustration due to changing hormones. Hormones can also cause quick changes in energy levels. You may notice people respond to you differently as you grow. People see you more as an adult and may treat you differently. This happens to boys during puberty as well. 4. Accept that he may act differently around his friends. Boys sometimes treat you differently around their friends. Teenage boys are often embarrassed to be interested in girls for the first time. He may act standoffish towards you because he feels insecure. He may also want to make it clear to his friends they are his priority. Try to be understanding of this. If you are dating a teenage boy, allow him to have some friend. Time. 3. Do not put up with disrespect. If he is mean to you in front of his friends, you say something like, I understand you want to act cool around your friends, but it's not okay for you to make fun of me. 5. Learn to make casual conversation. Often, the best way to understand someone is simply to talk to them. While talking to boys can be scary, it is often helpful to understand them better. Learn to be brave and engage teenage boys in conversation. 4. Ask specific questions, like hobbies, family, and his favorite subjects in school. For example, are you close to your siblings? If you're unsure how to strike up a conversation, ask about something around you or something that's recently happened. For example, what did you think of yesterday's assembly method? 2. Understanding teen boys as a parent. Download article. 1. Put yourself in your teen's shoes. Remember, teens are very insecure and self-conscious. They are also striving to carve out an identity, which may explain bouts of rebellion or acting out. On top of all that, your teen's brain is still developing, and he doesn't yet have an adult-sized capacity for things like impulse control and decision making. Try to remember your own teenage years. For example, if he wants to stop an activity he once enjoyed, put yourself in his shoes. 
If he was forced to play hockey during middle school, he may want to try something different so that he can gain a sense of individuality. 2. Do research about teenagers. It's important to understand the changes your teen is going through as a parent. One of the best things you can do to understand teenage boys is to educate yourself about your teen. Read articles about teenagers, especially ones about the hormonal and mood changes they undergo. Young adult fiction books can also help you. Remember the emotions teens undergo. Keep in mind that this research may not describe your teen exactly. It's important to get to know your teenage boy, not just the boys described. In literature, take an interest in the things your teen is passionate about. To connect and get to know him better. 3. Allow your teenager some privacy. While it's important to know what your teen is doing and who he is with, remember teenage years are part of the transition into adulthood. It's important your teen feels he has some privacy in your home, so be respectful of his need for space and occasional alone time. While it's reasonable to want to know where your teen is going and with whom, you should give him some privacy. Your teen may feel he needs a certain amount of privacy to establish his identity. Things like text messages and phone calls should be private. Consider lessening some rules as your teenager ages. If he is unreliable or violates your trust, however, you may need to keep stricter rules in place for longer. 4. Make sure your teen does not engage in reckless behavior. The teenage brain is not fully developed. As a parent, it's vital you understand teenage boys often have a limited understanding of consequences. This can result in engaging in risky behavior, so be sure to be vigilant. You should make sure your teen is not taking major risks, such as using drugs or alcohol. 5. A teen's developing brain does not give them a free pass for reckless behavior. Consequences are how he learns to make good choices. You should still have expectations and boundaries. Things like bedtimes and curfews should still be enforced, and you should know where he is at all times. 5. Be prepared for the effects of hormones. Teenagers undergo a lot of hormonal changes. This can lead to things like mood swings. Try to be patient if your teen seems aggravated or is easily angered. You should make sure your teen faces consequences for inappropriate or rude behavior, but try to be understanding. It will take a few years for your teen to adjust to hormonal changes. 6. Have patience. Many parents feel the teenage years will never end, but your son should eventually grow out of mood swings and anger. Problems caused by puberty. Once he has calmed down, discuss his behavior. Don't lecture. Instead, Focus on what he can do differently in the future. 6. Expect that he will start to think about sex. Odds are, your son will start thinking about sex during his teenage years and may even explore pornography. Recent research says the majority of adolescent males explore pornography websites. 7. While this is a Normal part of growing up, it's important you talk to your son about sex and porn. Talk to your son about sex and sexuality and let him ask questions. If he's uncomfortable discussing the subject with you, find a trusted third party, like an uncle, to help. 8. 
Don't panic if he asks about sex, it doesn't mean that he's having sex or considering doing so. He may just be curious, which is normal. Leave any conversation you have about sex open-ended. Say something to your teen like, if you have any questions, it's always okay to come to me with them. Method 3. Managing differences and conflicts Download article 1. Find the right times to talk. If you need to communicate with your teenager, look for the right time. Pay attention to when your teen seems relaxed and receptive. Make a habit of talking regularly during those times to keep communication in your home. Open. 9. It may take some trial and error to figure out when he is most talkative. He may be more quiet when you pick him up from soccer practice, but get chattier after dinner. 2. Ask open-ended questions. Whether you're a parent or a teen yourself, remember. Teenage boys may be private about certain things. They may also be sensitive about some topics. Instead of asking questions directly, learn to ask open-ended questions. This will allow a teenage boy to share information at his own discretion. 10. Instead of asking, are you excited about the school dance? Try how. Are you feeling about the dance? Do you think you feel comfortable? Going. If he gives short responses, this may not be a subject he wishes to. Discuss. Try to find what he does enjoy talking about, like his hobbies. And interests. 3. Assert yourself when necessary. If you are a teenage girl, it's important you stand up for yourself when necessary. If a teenage boy is frequently teasing you to the point you feel uncomfortable, it is within your right to let him know his behavior is not acceptable. 11. It is okay to express your emotions to boys. If a boy is making you feel Uncomfortable, say so clearly. Say something if a boy is bothering you, such as, I don't like it when you comment on my body. It makes me feel uncomfortable. If teasing doesn't stop, ask an adult for help. 4. Seek professional help in some cases. Teenagers may suffer from things like depression, anxiety, and other emotional issues. While a certain amount of mood swings are normal, if a teenager seems very unhappy or angry, you should seek the help of a therapist. 12. Warning signs of a mental health issue include 13. Difficulty concentrating, a sudden drop in grades, weight loss or gain, lack of motivation. Difficulty sleeping. Fatigue. Expert Q&A. Question. What are some warning signs that a teenage boy is really struggling? Wits and parenting. Parenting specialists. Expert answer. They may be extremely withdrawn. There may be a sudden change in their behavior. They may suddenly stop taking care of their hygiene. Often if there's a sudden change, something has happened and they don't want to talk about it. And of course, if they're talking about suicide or obsessed with their own death, that's the time when you want to intervene. Not helpful 1 helpful 10. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Every teen is different. Each person matures at a different rate. Listen to your gut when it comes to issues.